Hi, and welcome back to Gage Hill Crafts. I'm Rick. And I'm Sarah. And today we have a, um, I don't know, a summary, a, a post-event uh, tour. of and wrap up. Uh, and wrap up of the uh, Vermont Nano Fest, which was held, um, well, yesterday. Uh, we're recording this on a Sunday. It'll come out Monday. So it was held uh, this past Saturday. And it's just a, a one-day event. Um, local beer festival, as the name implies, it's all nano breweries, so very small breweries with small production. Um, and we wanted to kind of give you an overview of the event and the things that we tasted. Yeah, so as Sarah said, it was a, an event we've been to a number of times, and this year it was the fourth annual. It was held at our local fairgrounds. Mm -hmm. And it's always great to be there and see all these local uh, nano breweries. As Sarah said, it's a one day event. And as nano breweries, they probably couldn't do more than a one-day event. There's, they would probably take up their entire inventory in order to be able to do a second day. Most of these breweries were running out of beer by the end of the day. It's great. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. So um, in previous years, we've helped out sometimes. We've gone at different times of day. I would say that this year, um, I, I liked it a little better the way that we did it. So I had some chores to do in the morning and actually it turned out we had a plumbing emergency at home. Um, so after dealing with all that, we ended up leaving the house around 2.15, got over there just before three o'clock um, and the event runs noon to six. So we were there about halfway through the event. Um, it was pretty busy, but there was no real line to get in. Um, so that was nice. We didn't have to stand in the hot sun waiting to, to get into the door. And but we did have to stand in line for beers at first, but then that started to filter out probably by four o'clock. Um, the lines weren't as long. So. Yeah, our arrival time at two thirty was also perfect because, uh, as we said, we have volunteered previously. We didn't do so this year, and that is when the crew shift changes. So a lot of our friends mm -hmm. who were volunteering for the morning shifts became available to drink with us. So it was kind of nice, too. That's right, yeah. And we had some out-of-town uh, guests with us, so that was also fun to bring them and introduce them to some of the um, things we knew we liked and could recommend, and then for us to all try some things that we'd never tried before. Yeah, that was a nice mixture this year of uh, breweries we hadn't tried and some local favorites. Mm -hmm. Yep, there were some new, um, some people who were new to the brewery, or new to the uh, events, some new breweries that had not uh, vended there before, so... Again, it's great for us because it's, you know, 20 minutes down the road at the Tunbridge Fairgrounds. Um, but I saw a lot of out-of-state plays. I saw, I talked with a lot of people that were from around the state and had, had driven, you know, an hour or two to get to the festival. So it's good to see them doing well. Um, is there anything else about the event itself you want to talk about? Well, they also had some great food. We uh, had mm. some nice barbecue from a place called Big Head Ed's. I think they're based out of Fairleigh, Vermont, so they're local to the Upper Valley. And I got yeah, lots of good music. There was some great music at just the right volume. Mm -hmm. And there were tents set up, and there were picnic tables, and there were places to uh, congregate under the trees. It, it's a really nice scene there. Yeah, it was kind of um, warm yesterday, and um, but the the breweries dispense their beers inside of a covered building, um, so that's good. And then there's also big trees and a lot of shaded area outside. And I know that some people had brought their own like ten by ten kind of pop up shade uh, tents, which um, also came in handy when we got a couple of little rain showers. <laughs> yeah, we got to squat under under somebody else's tent with them, so that was nice too. But uh, let's get right into the tasting then. Yeah, so I broke mine up into, like I said, uh, those we hadn't tried before and some old favorites. So one of the ones that was the first beer we tried was St. Jay's Brewery. And um, for those of you not from Vermont, that stands for St. Johnsbury, which is a town that is probably the southernmost town of the Northeast Kingdom. And uh, they didn't have a line. <laughs> and it was hot, and I wanted a drink, and I saw Mango IPA and tried gave it a try. And I, I liked it. It was... Um, so, uh, it wasn't too mangoey. Mm. It had a little bit on the nose, uh, but it was very uh, refreshing, pale, nice, mm -hmm. very nice. Okay. And I uh, I think I may have had a quick sip of yours. I don't really remember no. it, but I was drinking their um, raspberry wheat at the time, which had, a I think, a stronger flavor mm -hmm. than yours did. So, okay. it might have been kind of, you know, um, obliterating that on my palate and not able to taste the mango. But um, the... The raspberry wheat, since I did have a full taste of that, um, it's not a style I usually go for. I know that's sort of like raspberry wheat is like your your it's your 
stereotypical girly girl beer, right? It's it's something that, like, I don't know. I get offered it a lot at parties and stuff like, oh, do you want raspberry wheat? And I'm like, I don't like wheat beer. <laughs> but it was hot and it was something fruity and there was no line. So I decided to try it anyway. Um, and I liked it a great deal. I don't normally go for wheat beers. They tend to be a little bit too sharp for me. I just don't like that cutting kind of wheat. Mm -hmm. um, it's almost a sensation on the tongue. I can't even call it a flavor, but it's like a sharpness that you feel in your mouth. Mm -hmm. um, this didn't have it quite so much. It really had a lot of the raspberry flavor, and I could tell that they used real fruit and not like a flavoring or something because it just had that raspberry bitterness in the aftertaste nice. that I think you couldn't get mm -hmm. from you know anything that wasn't just real raspberries. So yeah, it was nice, and it wasn't too sour. Mm -hmm. We've been talking about getting up to St. John's Bear and possibly giving this place a go and seeing it. So it was nice to be able to sample some beers. And it was one of the reasons we chose them as being the first place. Mm -hmm. Sarah said she had a full pour. I wanted to allude. One of the nice things that's nice about this place is that you can get a 3-ounce, 6-ounce, 9-ounce, or 12-ounce pour and just give as many tickets you want. So if you mm -hmm. like something, you don't just have to keep getting back in the line and getting a 3-ounce pour. And getting a tiny you bit of it, You can give yeah. four tickets if, or, if you right. want and get a, a bigger, a larger pour. Right, and what I meant was I didn't have a full pour of this. I probably wouldn't oh. order a full pour of raspberry wheat beer, mm. but I had a full taste of it okay. versus a single sip from your glass. Gotcha. Oh, my apologies. So, um, yeah, so that was St. J. Um, I would definitely try it again, and I would try, I'd probably try another one of their non fruit beers, but they seem to have a lot of fruit beers. Probably because it's a beer festival in August, right? That's like what you want to be drinking. I was going to say that was kind of a theme for today <laughs> was there was a lot of saisons and farmhouse and a lot of uh, fruit beers out there. Right. Really refreshing. Right. Which makes sense. Um, I saw that, that Brockle Bank had, had brought their loam, their stout. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think one or two other places had a porter, but that was about it. So... Well, there's a couple of a black IP, a black IPA or an IBA, and a couple of oh, others that I saw. Okay. Some uh, one other porter, I think I saw. Mm -hmm. uh, I I had Who one had IBA, IBA? Uh, that was Good Measure. Oh, okay. So that's a nice segue. So Good Measure, which is in Northfield, and uh, they also kind of in the Berlin and Montpelier area. They're kind of centrally located in that region. And they do also have a sister place with Carrier Roasters, so right there, their coffee place. So anyway, we know Scott from the, pretty much the day we moved to Vermont, <laughs> the owner of that place. He used to be our bartender at uh, McGillicuddy's in Montpelier. And now he is uh, an entrepreneur and very community-focused uh, mm -hmm. guy. And it's, it's a, an honor to know him, but it's also great to what he does in that community. So I tried his Dark Pine, which was an – he called it a, a – uh, I, a black IPA. Mm -hmm. That is officially what it is. I like to call them IBA. And it was very bitter, almost chocolatey, and just a little bit probably too intense on my palate for a hot summer day, but a very, very good beer. And it surprised me. Mm -hmm. And I also had the, what was it he called it? Um, the Planned Obsolescence, which was their double IPA. Mm -hmm. You may have had a taste of that with Gary and or me. Uh, very, very orangey and fruity. So lots of great things from them, and it surprised me because they normally have these English styles like the ESBs and uh, Blondes and uh, uh -huh. Pales. And, and he really likes his sour beers too. True. Um, and like you've pointed out, um, doesn't really go for the, the jump on the double IPA bandwagon. Um, had one called One Trick Pony <laughs> um, a while back which was just going to be a one-off, I think, for an event. Um, so, yeah, it's interesting to see him get back into a double IPA style. But. Yeah, yeah, One Trick Pony was more of an English IPA, but, yeah, oh, okay. it, is, it did surprise me as well. Mm -hmm. So, it, But it was still great to see him behind the counter pouring his own beers at this small festival. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what else did you try? Um, so some other new-to-me's, um, Red Clover Ale Company, and they're out of Brandon, Vermont. I always get my... B name, Vermont place names mixed up, Brandon, Bradford. Um, uh, and I tried their Citra Saison. I like mm. Citra hops quite a bit. Um, and so Sorry, Ben. <laughs> ben of Frockle Bank does not like Citra hops. Um, we won't say why. But <laughs> anyway, so he doesn't brew with them. Um, but I like them. Um, as the name implies, they have a citrusy flavor. I really enjoy those flavors paired with 
different styles. Now, I'm not going to say that citrus should be in every style of beer. Probably shouldn't. Um, but I think certainly for IPAs and Saison and lighter colored beers, it's just so refreshing to have something citrusy on a hot day. Yeah. And their Saison, and it was, um, that one had a nice peppery um, feeling when you first put it onto your tongue. Mm -hmm. um, but then it kind of balanced out and had more herbal notes and a nice clean finish at the end, and that was very refreshing. I could okay. I could probably session that all day long on a hot day. Um, so yeah, so that was the Citrus Saison from Red Clover Ale Company. Um, I can't always tell if places have descriptive names and also have other names for their beers. Uh -huh. um, and these folks, I couldn't find like a yeah. standard beer menu on their website or anything. So I don't know if that Citrus Saison has another name, but... Right, I did the same thing good. before we started this video. I checked out Untapped to see if maybe there were specific branded names for these beers that right. I was I was missing. And for example, St. J Brewery, the Mango IPA is called Mango IPA, mm -hmm. um, but I'd say like Dark Pine uh, or um, Planned Obsolescence. Sometimes you right. had to, I had to go back and check those because yeah. I really just wasn't paying attention. I was mostly looking at the descriptions more or less than trying to retain those for my notes. <laughs> right. I even took a couple pictures of uh, boards. people's boards. Ah, smart. Um, just cause I was trying to enjoy myself, but then I kept going up to Rick going, did you make notes? Did you take t tasting notes? We have to do our video tomorrow. <laughs> That's funny. Pestering it myself and him. Um, did no, you have anything from Red Clover? I did not. No, okay. I, and I'm, I'm, um, I'm a little disappointed in myself for not. And or not. <laughs> Sarah and I split up for a little bit of this time. We had some friends. Right. We kind of found a place under the tent where the kids could hang out with their mother or father. And then we would go in, get some drinks, come back out, and mm -hmm. uh, hang out with them for a bit. Right. Plus, so, we had all of you from our beer club. And mm -hmm. just, I mean, it's Tumbridge, so we know like probably half the population. <laughs> So, right, right. So just chatting and socializing, yeah. yeah. So we did our own thing, and I was also the designated driver, so I was not drinking as much. Right. Um, I only had really had four um, samples, and then Rick has got some a few more to talk about. So. Thank you, sweetie. You're welcome. I appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was good. I I can't drink very much on a hot day anyway. It just it really kind of wipes me out. Right. Um, Which is why I was seeking out some of the sessions and the saisons and mm -hmm. the lower alcohol. Lower, lower alcohol yeah. Ones, yeah. Yeah. So, speaking of which, uh, I had a Smith Farmhouse Saison from Kickback Brewery. Mm -hmm. And that's a veteran-owned place. And, okay. um, it's based in Westford, Vermont, which is just north of Burlington. And again, it's veteran-owned. had some really nice things. I only tried this one Saison. It seemed to kind of have raspberries. I didn't ask which fruit, uh, but based on the nose and the color... And the taste, I think it may have been a raspberry, mm. uh, which was really, really tasty. It was, mm -hmm. That was the second beer that they had. And I, you can see a theme. I was going for fruits and interesting uh, yeasts mm -hmm. you know, to kind of clean my palate and not feel too heavy. Right. And things we don't normally yeah. drink a whole lot of. Like we've said, you know, we don't, we don't drink a ton of sour beers. We don't drink um, some of these other kind of newer styles. Um, but... Yeah, Saison on a hot day, for sure. All day long. I was, I was hitting those up. <laughs> um, so I just so said one. Back. I just said yeah. kickback, and you... Oh, and then you also tried uh, Simple Roots, which oh, right. I didn't try, um, because I've had their... They sell their beer in cans right. around here, and so it's pretty easy to get just at your local market. Mm -hmm. uh, I noticed he had sold out of the Elderflower Saison, which is probably right. my favorite Saison uh, oh, God, that we can get that. locally. It's really good. If you're not familiar with the elderflower flavor, it actually does come from a flower. Um, but if you let the flowers sit on the tree, then they become elderberries. But the flowers have this, uh, I don't know, it's like a magical unicorn flavor to me. It's its sweet, it's floral, and it has some kind of almost a honey taste to it or something. But it's its not honey. You know, yeah. it's, it's this other flavor. Yeah. So anyway... No, you're right. And so they're in the north end of Burlington, and they they have have they do have things in cans around the area that we can get at our local mm -hmm. cooperative. Um, so this is why I tried their strawberry saison. Okay. Um, yeah, because I hadn't had that. Right. So I hadn't seen that in cans, and decided to give that a go. And again, another theme. Uh, it's another saison, and definitely another fruit. And it was really nice. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of good strawberry, not too overwhelming. Yeah, drinkable. Okay. Very cool. Should we talk about the saison that we disagreed on? Sure. Why not? Yeah. Yeah. 
So, so while we're on Saison, so I got um, I got in line and I wanted to try something from Upper Pass. Um, known mostly for New England IPAs, very hop forward things. Right, and we've actually interviewed Chris and Andy on the channel. You can go back in our feed and look. look yeah, for we'll that make interview. links to it. Um, but uh, what I wanted to say about that is because we've had because they're so local, they're in Tunbridge, and I can get their kind of their flagship beers anytime I want. Yeah. Um, but I saw that they had some other things on their menu at this event. And so I wanted to try their saisons because I was almost felt like I was just having a saison tasting. And so I got a sample and I drank a sip and then I gave the rest to Rick. <laughs> yeah, and I had just gotten uh IPA or something from maybe that's where maybe that's when I was getting a hired hand and I think I traded you. No. Nope. Okay. You know, let me have a sip of it and I gave Oh, all right. Like, no, here, I, you, right. I stood in line, drank the other one, gave her an beer. empty glass, and then she, yeah, <laughs> gave her her well. empty glass. Yeah. So, um, and, no, and I enjoyed it a great deal, especially yeah. after it warmed up. I think it had a nice little peppery. It was this yeah. beautiful creamy head. So this was Upper Pass, and okay. they were calling it CP's Dream. Correct. Which is one of the owners, his name is Chris Perry. So I, I don't know why I, I didn't figure that out on the day. I just learned that today. But yeah. CP's dream, and I know Chris likes sour beers, and he likes saisons. I don't know what it was about this beer; it just didn't do it for me. It was maybe because it was a little bit lighter in mm -hmm. terms of its flavor and its body and everything than some of the other beers I've been having. It just didn't quite have that impact. I think it had more of a funk that you're not, even though it was a subtle amount of funk to it. Uh huh. I don't think that was something you liked. I think that been. it kind of went away after that initial kind of allowed the air out a bit. Mm-hmm. Um, but I enjoyed it, so thank you for sharing. Yeah, sure. Yeah, good. Um, and it wasn't a bad beer. It was just, yeah. you know, there I was no trying to beers. control my alcohol intake, and so when something wasn't really grabbing me, and I was like, oh, I definitely want to finish this, then I would just pass it off to Rick. Right. Like <laughs> dogs, there are no bad beers. That's right. <laughs> good beers. <laughs> well, again, it's just mm -hmm. different beers, different tastes. Right, yeah, right. Great. Well, actually, speaking of dogs, this was not planned, but this oh, ties into my next tasting, <laughs> which was from uh, Green Empire Brewing, and they were another new to us. Right, they were right? We haven't tasted any of their beers before. No, no, no. We had them. They were there last mm. year. They made the one that had the hemp. They still did this year. That had oh, the hemp in, the hemp the hemp in, in it. it. Okay. Yeah. That they that had four point two zero percent ABV, so mm -hmm. they had a Vermont <laughs> green beer uh, with some hemp, which I brewed before with. It's a wonderful hemp hearts are a great thing. Though. To, to brew with mm -hmm. um but yeah okay i didn't yeah. get a chance to try this so i had their leo ipa our dog's name is leo um and it was not a double ipa it was a it was just a straight ipa mm -hmm. um and it was very very nice um i have in my notes here sweet and malty with a pronounced top flavor and a fruity finish so exactly sort of what it says on the tin or what you would expect from that style Mm -hmm. um, and I, I didn't make a note, or maybe, I don't even know if they told you what hops they used, but whatever it was, it was one of the ones I like, um, or some of the ones I like, you know, fruity, mm -hmm. a little bit citrusy, Right. very nice beer. Right, you might have to look these up or go to their websites to get to see if there's particular hops or something in it. We weren't mm -hmm. really doing that close of a tasting. Uh, again, it was hot. Those three-ounce pours were going quickly, mm -hmm. and we would actually get a three-ounce pour, my friend Josh and I, get a three ounce pour and then get into another line and drink that and talk while we were getting into the next line. Right. It, the lines moved very quickly and mm -hmm. the vibe was so awesome. Everybody was so agreeable. Yeah. yeah. And just in case you don't know what a three ounce pour is, um, Rick's drunk his beer down to about that level. Mm -hmm. So a little bit less than this, but so it's, you know, it's a few sips. It's enough to really get a feel for a beer, but not Right. Enough to feel like you've had a beer, if it's, that makes sense. Right. It should be just below that. I'm pretty sure what they did is they designed the glass to have like a three ounce, a six ounce, a nine ounce, and a 12. Yeah. So that they can is. do a visual pour. A lot of breweries will do that, or a lot of places that serve beer will do that because right. it makes it easier to if make sure. If you shave your right. glass or put your logo strategically yeah. in the right place, then you know, okay, the bottom of the logo is this much beer and the yep. top of the logo is that much beer. Exactly. Yeah. So it works out well. Um, yeah. And by the way, Right now, we're just having a beer while we talk to you. This is not any of the beers that we tried. This is just a Vermont beer that we like. Um, okay, so that was Green Empire Brewing. What else? I have one more. But, okay. Um, well, we mentioned most these of these. Guys. The only other, exactly, and that was my mm -hmm. last beer of the day. So I was going to okay. say our hosts, Brockle Bank, not a sponsor, just good friends. Um, 
they this is the fourth year they've done this and we really salute them it's becoming a wonderful event and a kind of a destination uh, kind of thing for craft beer people mm -hmm. and really helps um, get a leg up for some of these smaller craft breweries who may want to go bigger a uh, craft uh, excuse me Bronco Bank um, Ben is very much he's a plumber first he mm -hmm. is a brewer second and they're only open on Friday and Saturday night, Saturdays and so but they're still a destination on this dirt road in Tunbridge, and they put on the best festival yep. I've been to in a long time. Yeah, but like you said, some of these other breweries, like you know Mike at Bent Hill and some mm -hmm. of those other places, you know they may be trying to grow. Right. And of course, with I think one it's still one of the the top um, in terms of per capita breweries per population. You know, it can be hard to get your get your name out there, get your people drinking your beer. And so this kind of small festival where you're not in there with the other heavy hitters and the, the big breweries. Um, and, you know, there were only about 12 breweries oh, all together. Right. Um, with 49 different types of beer. That's right. So, you know, then then you can have more of that face time and talk to people and, you know, even sample out new flavors if you've been around for a while. So there's a lot of advantages, I think, to this small well, event. Specifically, the two we were just discussing, Bent Hill and Brockle Bank, both of them are on dirt muddy roads mm -hmm. they're not accessible you know ben's only open on friday and saturday if one of those is a rainy day in march you're not getting to the brewery that's true yeah. so in so the same thing people another option that right. way as well yeah. mike has expanded his operation up at his mm -hmm. home uh, his family homestead um but again it's on a dirt road and sometimes during winter and or mm -hmm. mud season you can't get there right. so this is another opportunity to kind of make a little coin and also uh, influence some people on the great beers they make. Speaking yeah. of Mike, that's probably where right. we should probably go out. It was the last beer I had. Of the well, day. no, you didn't talk about your Brack oh, Bank sorry. taste. Well, I had Yellow Jacket, which oh, is something okay. we... It's your go-to from them, probably. Yeah. Right, it was. At first, it was um, Timber Rattler, which is now almost exclusively in cans, and I don't see it as often. You can still only get it at the brewery there mm -hmm. if you don't go to a restaurant. Mm -hmm. Well, that's not true. You can also get it at the South Royalton Market mm -hmm. on tap in a growler. Um, oh, I didn't know that. But okay. I like the Yellow Jacket probably a little bit more than this, which is not quite a double IPA or something like that, or not quite an IPA. He calls, he calls Timber Rattler an IPA and a half. half. Yellow Jacket is just an IPA. Right. And I just, right. yeah, I really like that. I'm becoming mm -hmm. more and more uh, familiar with it. To me, it's a little more mm, zippy, I yeah. would say. Like Timber Rattler's more... Uh, Bitter, a little drier. Yeah, or I just think Yellow Jacket's bright, almost almost more malty. Ooh. I would say Timber Rattler's more. I would say the heavy. Around. Yeah, and then malty, and yeah. then Yellow Jacket's like a little zippier. Yeah, I, again, he doesn't I use Citra, but it has a very lemon zest mm -hmm. kind of thing that's going on. It's really great. So mm -hmm. yeah, that's yeah. what we have from our host, the Brockle Bank. Thank you, Ben and Ann. Yes. And then, again, my last beer of the day was to go with one of our favorites, which is the, the Blood Orange. With mine, I got was the Blood Orange Imperial IPA. Okay, from Bent Hill. Yeah. 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 Um, and that's one of my favorites. Um, but, again, because I was driving and it's an Imperial IPA, uh, I didn't have any, although I, I do frequently buy it in cans at right. the store. It's another one we can um, get in cans locally. So I went with their Wildflower Saison, mm -hmm. uh, which I had not had. Before I don't know if, if that was special to the oh. event or or you know was new or if he just done it before. Um, what I liked was that it definitely had a, a wildflower kind of taste. If you think about wildflower honey, mm -hmm. um, that kind of herbally flowery. I can't quite put my finger on it, but it's just a nice like outdoor kind of flavor. And then <laughs> it's so hard to describe things. Yeah, sure. um, and then it had a little bit of a tang to it, but it wasn't too sour. Um, so it didn't taste like lemon juice or something. It just had a little bit of a, a perky um, background tang. It wasn't even necessarily the first thing you notice about the beer, but after it had been sitting in your mouth for a second, you're like, oh, yeah, it's a little bit tangy and refreshing. Hmm. Um, and I so it was really did, nice. You didn't get a chance to find out what types of wildflowers. No. I was wondering because when you go to Bent Hill Brewing, there's this field of wildflowers. Mm -hmm. so you have, they have a path cut through that you kind of meander and get greeted by dogs. Because they're another very dog friendly place. Yep. And I was just curious which ones they were using. I don't know. I'll we'll have, have to, have to investigate. Check. Maybe last mic because Yeah, so Bent Hill was my was my last tasting and like mm -hmm. I said, I really enjoyed their wildflower saison. And we will have to ask mm -hmm. uh Mike 
what kind of wildflowers they use. Okay, yeah. yeah. And what I had was, again, I said I had the double, uh, excuse me, the um, Blood Orange Imperial IPA. Uh, and I used that probably with my last tickets, what I thought were my last tickets, and just got a full pour. Again, Sarah was driving, so I decided to go out with a nice, refreshing blood orange. Mm -hmm. It's kind of it's nice. It's kind of sweet from the malt, but it's also got like almost a pithy kind of bitterness mm -hmm. from, the, from the fruit. The blood oranges are quite bitter if you've ever just sat and eaten mm -hmm. a blood orange. Yeah. And, it, and it definitely carries through in that beer. And I like that too because it balances out the heaviness of the malt with yeah. that. And I remember him coming in. The, I'm, I'm sorry to interrupt. Yeah, I also no. remember him coming into the co-op when he was just a, you know, he went from he didn't even become a home brewer. He essentially jumped right over, bought some equipment, and started going big. Mm. And he would come into the co-op and buy a big thing of toasted coconut and organic toasted coconut for one of his porters, and he'd be mm -hmm. buying cases of blood oranges to make these things by mm -hmm. hand. And at the scale now, I'm sure he had to find another source. So mm. thanks, Mike. We we appreciate it. So. Yeah, that was good. Support your local co-op, right? Yeah. Um, yeah, so we enjoyed the day. Um, we we're glad that the weather was pretty good. It did start to drizzle in the afternoon, but mm -hmm. that's okay. And um, just thanks to all the breweries for bringing your stuff and putting on a great show for us. It's always nice to attend those things and find some new, some new items to check out in more detail. Okay. So. And I'll put a link to the Vermont Brewers Association below this video. Each of the breweries we've mentioned has a little page. A lot of them don't really have a, a website proper. They might be on, you know, social media or something. Um, but they also but may not all, be part of the Vermont Brewers Association. No, they're all members of oh, the Vermont Brewer Association. Oh. And so they all have like a little bio page and it kind of says okay. like, Here's where they're located. Here's their brewery hours if they're oh. if they have tasting hours or if they're normally open during the week and all that. So you can find that information. Uh, I'll put the link below this video. Yeah. There's a, speaking of the Vermont Brewers Association, they have an excellent app which allows you mm. to take advantage of that kind of passport program as well without actually having a physical card. But it's a very helpful, very uh, informative app. Okay, Recommend yeah, that as well. So for probably has, that list. probably has the tasting hours and other things in yeah. as well. Probably. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Um, yeah, well, so yay Vermont beer. Um, good job, everybody. And a great job, especially to Anne Linehan, um, who is uh, the organizer for this festival, really. And um, she's also, I know, on the board of the Brewers Festival now, or the, the Brewers Association now. Yep. And so she's just doing a lot for Vermont beer. So thank you, Anne. Thanks, Anne. So, yeah, so thanks again for joining us. Um, tune in in a few weeks. Um, we're going to be tasting another specialty brew. It's a hybrid brew, and we can't wait to share that with you. I'll just tease you about it for right now. Um, but we're looking forward to tasting that. And in the meantime, let us know what you're drinking this summer. If you're trying any new styles, or if you're brewing anything new, um, or just enjoying any local festivals to where you are, we'd love to hear about that. I'm mostly interested in if you have nano breweries, small breweries mm. in your local community, maybe home brewers who made the leap and are just trying to trying it out and see what they can, how they do. Yeah, because we like to travel and we always hit up breweries whenever we go in there. So let us know what we should check out. Yeah. So thanks everybody. Cheers, and tune in next week.